Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your market roundup for June 26th. Corey here with you. Nice to see all of you and let's get to it. So uh, in terms of the markets, we're in this give back. And the question is, is it the start of something more significant? I fear that it is for the markets. I think we've created this exhaustion high and that we're in that phase of kind of a deterioration, a little bit of a give back on an intermediate basis. We'll touch on that when we get to the charts. Today, more of the same that's been happening over the past week or so, just give backs in the market about down a half a percent in the S&P, down 1.3 in the NASDAQ, oil and gold slightly positive. Daily news, Russia dealing with its internal rebellion. Uh, that was quickly ended, but it leads to potentially greater strife and more willingness to stand up against Putin and so on. I think it's great news, but uh, we'll see what it brings with it. Manufacturing PMIs that came out on Friday, just really in recession territory, below 50s. Now, you're seeing the manufacturing way, way down across around the world, but services are still up. And so there's this disconnect where some things are ultimately have been in recessions or going into recessions while others are holding out. And that's kind of the rolling recession where it's not everything all at once. It's not a big catastrophe. It's just a general slowdown in some of the economy and some of the these factors that are related to higher interest rates. Advanced decline line, 53% of stocks advanced, even with the market going down today. And the S&P 500 is given ground. It's once again back to about 50-50. So are we in a an upward trend in the major markets? Yes, but we know that just as we saw, only half of stocks are above the 50 and half are below. So are you in a bull market in the S&P? Well, the chart is trending upward, but it's market cap weighted. Of course, if this were telling a true story, it'd be right around the 50-day moving average because half stocks are above, half are below, right? Because this is heavily weighted to the largest names, it looks better than if you were to look at an even weighted, in other words, S&P. But nevertheless, uh, the uptrend persists. My thought and my belief is that we have hit somewhat of an exhaustion and that this corrective phase is now overdue in essence. The NASDAQ has moved to the upside. Again, the same type of exhaustion, huge volume to put an exclamation point at the end of this run, and we are in the process of a deterioration. So watch for an A, B, C. Watch for a bounce that comes up. So this is the A leg. Watch for a B bounce, and then watch for one more leg to the downside, and then we'll see where we're at from there whether it continues, whether it only gives back this last frothy move, um, that should go away. That should at least correct back most of this recent rally. Now, in terms of looking at the markets, again, it's the bigger names and the more important names that came down today because half the stocks were up and half were down. In fact, it was like 52% of stocks were up because a lot of things were still up today. It was just when these go, Google, Meta, NVIDIA, Microsoft down 2%, Tesla down 6 when the big names go down, the market's going to get hit. And that's why the S&P and the NASDAQ were both down half to 1.5%. Given that, we see strength in energy today. We see strength really in this area, in materials, utilities, industrials. There's quite a bit of green over there. This is a rotation of sorts out of the more growthy type of names and into value, which that trend was not the case for quite some time. Uh, growth stocks are what led to the upside, and a lot of these value stocks just languished and couldn't get anything going. Is this a big rotation or is this just a little bit of catch up? I fear that it's the latter, just a little bit of catch up. And then again, I think the market as a whole is going to dip a bit further. So my market outlook is somewhat that we're at least in this A, B, C type of corrective phase, that there should be more downside before this thing is done. And we'll see, as, uh, as always, the market will grade that thesis with uh, the results. Now, as we look at potential bullish or bearish ideas, we've got a few candidates on the upside, a few on the downside. Let's look at a few charts here. Cisco to start off. 
This, I think, is a more bullish price pattern. I can make an argument for Cisco in a few different ways. You can call this an ascending triangle. You can call this a big cup and handle that might be forming right here. Uh, old resistance here is new support, that type of idea. There's a few different reasons to like Cisco relative to other things. Uh, I would like it more if I liked the market for a big rally. But again, I think the market rallies for a few days, that B pattern, and then another leg lower. If you're looking for bullish candidates, though, some of these could outperform and even do well in a down market. DraftKings, again, just looks good. Ascending triangle. Notice how it just stays up there. Even as they push on it, they really can't knock it down. To this point in time, usually these patterns resolve on the upside. So should DraftKings have outperformance? Looks that way. Looks like we've consolidated nicely after a big run. And then last but not least, PNC. Now this is in the regional banks. You can see a clear picture here of where resistance is. And I wonder if this is a little bottoming out process, maybe in PNC. Uh, head and shoulder bottom, right? This idea that this low here at the 50-day moving average, if it holds, we should trade up to that resistance. And frankly, we might even break out of that temporarily. So is this a bearish to bullish reversal? Something like regional banks is one of the areas that could and really should outperform even if the market turns down. The market turns down for a week or two, you know, a few weeks in that ABC pattern, at least at minimum, if it does that downturn, a lot of these regional banks could hold up in that environment because, again, they were going down for other reasons. And so the frothiness is not in regional banks. The frothiness might be more in some of those tech names things that where people are hoping for AI and all these things to come about to create billions and billions of dollars of profitability for the corporations, that's not being seen or priced into these financials. So you could absolutely see some outperformance there. On the bearish side, looking at charts that are broken, AEM, this is a gold mining stock. The gold miners look terrible. They look worse than gold. The metal, which also is in a bit of a downtrend. I've been negative on this sector for the past few weeks, and it's served me well. I think it still probably has room to go further. Uh, looking at Crocs, here's a retail stock. Even in a bullish market environment, we're in danger of hitting new multi-month lows. Even on a day like today, it just couldn't hold its gains. Not great price action. Now, if it can hold here, it might bounce for a day or two, but ultimately looks like a broken chart. And Teladoc, this is a stock that's been in a downtrend for quite some time. You can see a sort of descending triangle type of pattern. Expectation is, is that this pattern will usually resolve in the direction it came, which is quite clearly to the downside. So maybe it stays neutral for a while. Uh, path of least resistance, if it's going to trend, looks more likely to be down than up. So as I've said last week, exhaustion is here, in my opinion, in the QQQ. SPX finally confirmed that as well. And so I think it's just a market that's tired, that's exhausted. Usually it will give back that last portion, at least, those last few weeks of rally. And I would expect at least that much uh, to be given back here in the next couple of weeks. On the economic report side, Powell speaks on Wednesday and Thursday. The message from the Fed, and oh, by the way, I think it's exactly what the reality is going to be, is that the Fed is probably not done raising rates. Inflation is their number one risk and number one concern. When they've screwed up inflation, they can't afford to screw it up a second time and leave it too high. So if they're going to err, they're going to err on the side of being too aggressive in raising rates. They're, they're going to err on the side of being too aggressive in getting inflation down. And if that means the economy goes down and goes into a recession, so be it. They're going to they're gonna beat inflation 
And I think the market hasn't fully grasped that yet um, and, and priced that in. Now, I was bullish in prior months expecting some good numbers, that CPI would continue to show a downturn, etc. I think the risk to reward has flipped here for the at least the short term. PCE on Friday, this is a Fed preferred inflation number. And we'll see what that comes in at. But again, the message is clear. The Fed is still likely to continue to raise rates. Uh, we've got General Mills, Micron, Nike, Walgreens, and then earnings season is fast approaching where we're going to go right into the heart of it. Financials are not far from reporting. It's coming just around the corner. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.